My name's Sam, and this is the Hydrofoil. <laughs> my time is usually spent doing three things. I'm out at work as a pilot, on my fishing boat on my days off, or 3D printing things. Like Bender here. What about if we combined all three though? We'd end up with a 3D printed flying boat. That sounds like fun. Right, when I say flying boat, I don't actually mean a flying boat. That would be called a seaplane. But most of you watching this would have seen hydrofoils, like here in the America's Cup, where these supermodern sailing boats use hydrofoils to lift the boat clear out the water, just like how a plane uses a wing to fly. So why do we want to build a flying boat then? Well, the main reason is for efficiency. Boats aren't exactly efficient. For example, my boat does 2.5 miles per gallon of fuel used. The main reason for this poor efficiency is the amount of drag that boats create when they push through the water. Hydrofuels, on the other hand, have very little surface area within the water. Therefore, they're a lot more efficient, they produce less wake, and they're more pleasant to be aboard. Okay, plan alpha. We're gonna take my inflatable dinghy, design, 3D print, and then glue a hydrofoil to it. The current design I'm going for is a three-legged hydrofoil, a bit like this one here. The theory behind that is, with three points of contact with the water, it should be more stable, a bit like why a stool will have three legs and not two, obviously just fall over. Little problem is the dinghy lives an hour away, and at the moment I don't have time to get there. So I'm gonna to have to design this of what I've got in my head. Should be okay, shouldn't it? Do you know what my granddad always told me? Go on. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> you measured zero times <laughs> <Yeah>. and printed twice. <laughs> yeah. It's all right, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. So I designed the hydrofoil legs in Fusion 360. Once I was happy enough with them, I exported it into my slicer software and cut them into 16 different pieces, eight for each side. The total print time was just over 200 hours. Plus on top of that, we had 19 hours added for this print that decided to grow an afro. I'm very fortunate that I own three 3D printers, so I managed to complete all the printing in just over three days. Each part took approximately about 22 hours to print. I was really impressed how my Creality printers held up with some rather impressive overhangs. Tom Stanton came by and helped with some of the gluing and assembling of the hydrofoil, as well as giving me some design advice. The first leg complete, it was looking good, and even Tom was confident it was going to work. What do you think, Tom? It's alright. It's alright. It's alright. <laughs> even with Tom's optimism, it was pretty clear. The foil was far too big. To get an engine anywhere near that sort of length would be huge. This wasn't going to work. It's time for Plan Bravo, or should I say Plan Bodge. For all you perfectionists out there, look away now. This isn't going to be pretty. The hydrofoil leg was so big, I could use it as a single wing across the centre of the boat, like I'd seen with other designs. I'd printed one part of the second leg, and here's where the bodge comes in. I chopped the section in half, and I crudely glued the parts to the main wing. Then I used filler to cover up the gaps. The theory being once I fiberglassed it, that would provide the strength required, even if it didn't look pretty. A quick sand down of the filler, and the bodge was complete. I wasn't proud, but I think it will hold up once it's fiberglassed. So now it's time to fiberglass. Another first for me. After a bit of trimming, the fiberglassing had been completed. It wasn't the prettiest fiberglassing I'd ever seen, but it was really strong. I was pretty sure it was going to hold up. All I had to do now was just glue it to the dinghy. While I was waiting for the glue to dry, I quickly designed and 3D printed a foil that would connect to the engine. So the foil, all I had to do was just glue it to the engine. But I realised something. Which way does an engine push again? Wait a minute! Yep, you guessed it. I accidentally designed it backwards. Oh well, I designed another one quickly 3D printed it. Well, when I say quickly, it took 22 hours to print. Here's a time lapse. Which then snapped straight to when I tried to connect to the engine. Oh well, a bit more bodging and a bit more glue, and it should be okay. The first test anyway would be finding out whether the main foil has enough lift to lift the dinghy up. 
These little ones are just sort of trialing to see if it actually get the fly on the first attempt. I don't have too much faith though. And with the glue dry, that was it. It was ready for the first test. It seemed pretty strong. There's a little bit of flex, but I think that was mainly coming from the dinghy being inflatable. Initiate transport mode. I don't think this is going to fit in the car. <laughs> it's not going to fit in the car. We usually fold it up like that. Oh, right. Um, really. Beautiful fit. She's in. Easy transportation as well. Beautiful. Pump it up, connect the engine, and fill up with fuel. It was time for the first test. So more frost is what I got. I also had a three and a half horsepower engine. However, it didn't have a rear hydrofoil on. So this should be interesting. Oh, yeah. Got to leave forward to leave. Is that okay? <laughs> Look at him. As funny as it looked and quickly becoming a crowd attraction, my hydrofoil was actually producing plenty of lift. It had no problem lifting me clear out the water. I just needed to find a way to get the back to lift too. It wasn't most classical, or efficient for that matter, looking hydrofoil. However, it was great fun doing wheelies around the bay. And these chaps put along with their hydrofoil. I mean, it wasn't as fancy as mine though. Oh yeah, there's a hydrofoil. <laughs> That's not a hydrofoil. That's a hydrofoil. I employed my mum as ballast to sit at the front of the boat to try and help the weight the front down. However, the foil wasn't strong enough to lift us both. I did a few more runs, hoping for some better results. However, the information was pretty conclusive. There was something we needed. I think we need a back foil. So we brought the dinghy back home, which my girlfriend was super pleased to see back in the kitchen floor. Then we set to work. We had an extra challenge this time that we only had 48 hours before the weather turned absolute rubbish. With the time limit in mind, we set to work and designed a new thinner, and therefore quicker to print. It was a big ask for the printers, and we ended up printing multiple parts of the hydrofoil at the same time. We couldn't afford any mistakes. Once all the sections of the new foil had finished printing, which took about 24 hours, it was time to then glue them together, and a fiberglass at all. We were against the clock. It took about seven hours to complete in total. So this morning, we were up till half three in the morning fiberglassing this. Epoxy's everywhere. We had way too many beers. And uh, yeah, <laughs> she's, uh, she's ready to go. <laughs> There's a glove stuck to it as well. <laughs> Once we removed, say, the extra components of the new foil, we glued both wings to the bottom of the dinghy. All we had to do now was wait for some sunshine. The weather wasn't the only challenge we had to overcome just before we left. It looked absolutely ridiculous. But it's time. Let's go hide for it. A quick pit stop, of course with the hydrofoils and we were off to the river. Hopefully it'll be a bit more quieter now for the second test. Interesting. 
What was going on? It's cavitating the prop. You can hear it, it's revving. Oh, really? Cavitation occurs when the prop is too close to the surface of the water and it ends up sucking air down and therefore it's a lot easier to turn and over revs. What I think was actually happening though, here when you see the boat starts to create lift and it's actually flying at this point, the laminar flow of the wings starts to separate, a bit like how when a plane wing stalls. This separation causes turbulence in the water, most likely accompanied with some air bubbles, and this causes the prop to over rev but it wasn't producing any thrust when it was travelling faster. If you listen to this engine run here, you can hear the RPMs increasing and decreasing. I was keeping a constant throttle. I tried sitting at the front and at the rear of the boat to change the centre of mass to see if that would make a difference. But no, nope, just more wheelies. I was going to carry out some more tests, even though the results seemed pretty conclusive. And then, the weather made a decision for me. It's raining and Sam can't get off the boat quick enough. So he's uh, getting soaked. And I'm underneath a tree. Oh, brilliant. Just brilliant. It felt like a fail. We had worked so hard over the last 48 hours to get it going. Although it did produce lift, it was far from what I was dreaming of, of floating around two feet above the water on my hydrofoils. I think the answer is, we need a longer shaft outboard and therefore the prop we kept out the way of the wake produced by the wings. Unfortunately though, buying another engine at the moment isn't an option. I do have another idea though. We tried a two horsepower, we've tried a three and a half horsepower. What about if we turn behind 115 horsepower? Now some of you might call this cheating, and you'd probably be right, but this would provide proof whether or not the foils could actually lift me up. Finally, after all the hard work, it was actually working. I was clearly foiling. You could see me standing up and leaning to the left. I was doing this to try and direct the dinghy out of the way of the turbulent water caused by the 115 horsepower engine. So, a success. I think we would have had more improved performance if I had a rudder to steer away from the turbulent prop wash. There was only one thing left to do. And you guessed it. See how fast we could go. A fitting end to an emotional journey. Far from plain sailing, but a success nonetheless. So that's the end of that then. Both foils fell off rather spectacularly. We have Captain Paz here. Hey. Thanks very much for driving us around today. Um, overall a success I'd say. What would you say Paz? I'd say, yeah, 100%. Look, in the end the foils came off, but the, the, I, I think you you probably guessed by the footage that we've got. It definitely had air time. I could see daylight between the foils most of the time. So I think it's fair to say, Paz, we've been foils. We've been foils we've been... So. Okay, I'm calling that a success. All right, it wasn't quite the self-contained hydrofoil that we were expecting, but on the whole, it worked. Big shout out to Tom for his help throughout the project. If you've enjoyed this one and you'd like to see more like it, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching.